Hey, I'm Andrew from BTO Range, and today we're going to talk about uh, one of the premier shotguns, American-made shotguns, from uh, the late 19th century up until about 1950 or so, and this is an L.C. Smith uh, field-grade shotgun. This particular gun was made in 1937. Now, the history of L.C. Smith, when you think of American-built shotguns, you have the big three. You have Parker Brothers, you have A.H. Fox, uh, and you have L.C. Smith. There were others, the uh, Lefevre Brothers, uh, Lefevre Arms Company, and certainly Ithaca, and uh, not to be forgotten, Crescent Firearms Company that made hundreds of thousands of utilitarian side-by-side uh, -side shotguns throughout the same time period. But the L.C. Smith kind of stands alone for a few reasons. It started out uh, with two brothers, uh, Lyman Cornelius Smith, L.C. Smith, and his, and his older brother, Leroy, partnered up with a man by the name of William Baker that was, had the Baker Arms Company. And they made the Baker three-barrel gun, which was a, a double-barrel shotgun over a 44 caliber rifle barrel, uh, which was a very popular configuration in Europe with the drillings or dryling, as it's pronounced in German, but uh, didn't really catch on much in the United States. So uh, it wasn't a big commercial success. And Baker and the older brother, uh, uh, Lucas went off and they actually formed another great American arms company, Ithaca Arms Company in Ithaca, New York. So that, that left L.C. Smith um, producing this gun on his own. He, he ran into some financial problems and he sold it to a man by the name of Hunter who was a railroad tycoon. So the Hunter Arms Company was born and uh, that's why post, uh, post that sale all of these guns are actually made by the Hunter Arms Company and so marked there in Fulton, New York. Uh, but it was always named L.C. Smith. So uh, L.C. Smith really had direct uh, involvement in the gun that he uh, started for about four years, but his name lived on throughout the 1950s, which is kind of interesting. So uh, the Hunter Arms Company, they started out with the traditional uh, hammered shotguns, and then uh, they had an, in an inventor or firearms designer working for the company by the name of Alexander Brown who invented the side lock internal hammer shotgun that L.C. Smith became known for. And in fact, it's the only uh, premier grade side lock shotgun that was made in the United States. Uh, the Crescent Arms guns were also side lock, but not nearly the quality the L.C. Smith was. So uh, that continued on for a while. They got into a little bit of financial difficulty and they ended up selling to Marlin. And Marlin produced the gun for a few years up until around 1949 when there was actually a collapse in the floor of the building and the tooling was destroyed and that pretty much killed L.C. Smith uh, until Marlin resurrected the name some years later, but it was an Italian-made gun, it wasn't a side lock, it was a completely different thing. So, A little bit of the history, I don't want to go into too much of it because people tend to fade out, but uh, these are pretty cool guns. So let's talk about this actual gun for a second. This is a field grade gun. We have uh, the color case hardened side locks and receivers, and we see this is the original color case hardening. It's still in very nice condition. Uh, we have the fluid steel barrels. Now these barrels have been reblued. We'll talk about that in just a second. So we have uh, actually no engraving. So we know it's a field grade gun without even looking at it, but the guns are marked. If we roll this up, So actually when we start looking at the marks on the water table, we start to see the, where the serial numbers occur. So we're matching and we see it is actually marked field on here on this water table. And we get the serial number which is also going to be present on the, on the barrel set and even on the inside on the, on the bottom of the forend iron. So the 20 gauge, 12 gauge is by far uh, the most prevalent uh, and then 20 gauge, 16 gauge. Uh, there was only one 28 gauge L.C. Smith ever produced, it was serial number 100, and there were less than 2,000 410 gauge guns produced. So if, if you have a 410 gauge, uh, you've really made bank on that one. So what do we look for when we're evaluating the L.C. Smith? First is originality. We can tell that these barrels have been reblued uh, simply because they're the wrong color and the wrong polish of, on, the, on the metal. These uh, barrel sets were all rust blued from the factory. They were never hot blued. So this shiny blue black finish is indicative of hot salt, hot salt bluing. That really didn't occur until after World War II. 
so this gun, the barrel set's obviously been reblued. So that's a detractor, but it's been reblued well and it presents well, so at least there's, you know, there's that going for it. The good news is that when these barrel sets were constructed, they were brazed rather than soldered, so that they will, they will withstand, typically they will withstand a hot salt blue tank without separating, which is a problem on some of the older double barrel sets. On an LC Smith, one of the big things about LC Smith is how delicate the rest of the stock is. It, it adds to the, uh, the overall maneuverability of the gun. It makes, it's part of what makes an LC Smith an LC Smith, but they are prone to crack in this side lock inletting. So you really have to, to make sure that we don't have any cracks in the rest of this gun, which is uh, a big problem with LC Smith shotguns that have been used and not well taken care of. If possible, if you're evaluating an LC Smith, pop the side locks and look at the inletting inside on the stock. Uh, they will crack in there. So this gun is solid on the inside, we've looked at it, so that's in great shape. The bores are mirror. Uh, it's a well taken care of gun. There is absolutely no issue with shooting this gun. And that's one of the other great things about the LCs because their locking system is just as tight now as it was in 1937. So I've had to reface Parker Brothers shotguns. I've had to reface Lefevers. I've had to reface Ithacas. I don't believe I've ever had to reface L.C. Smith at all. So they, they're really well-made shotguns. Uh, they'll last with a little bit of care. They'll last, uh, they'll last forever. This little 20 board is a great example. It'll be a super dove gun. Uh, today if you enjoy shooting the double barrel shotguns. Uh, another little side note about the man that invented the gun, or, or invented the side lock action anyway, uh, he went on after he got out of the gun business, he went on to form Dunlop Tire Company. He, he actually uh, got in the automotive business. So it's kind of fascinating to me how all these interactions in the 19th century led to all these other great American companies. And, and maybe in a later segment we'll talk about how Winchester and Smith & Wesson actually once interacted. And, uh, with the Volcanic Arms Company and all that. But uh, anyway, neat little L.C. Smith shotgun. Uh, if you get the opportunity and run up on an L.C. Smith, uh, if you can grab it, grab it. Now, remember that the earlier guns before 1913, uh, you could get them with various barrel configurations. They, they may not have been fluid steel barrels. They made them in various grades of uh, Damascus barrels, and even in the bottom grades, they might have been stub twist barrels. And those may or may not be safe to shoot with modern ammunition. Have a gunsmith check them out. Anytime you buy an older gun like this, always have a gunsmith familiar with uh, the type of gun you're looking at. Check out the shotgun and make sure it's safe to shoot before you shoot it. Some guns may still be collectible, but not shootable. Uh, this particular gun is perfectly shootable as well as being a relatively collectible piece. The value is somewhat hurt because of the re-blue on the barrel but the color case hardening is still strong, the wood is still strong, and um, it's definitely shootable. It'll be a very usable gun. Thanks for watching this, guys. Uh, L.C. Smith shotguns are uh, getting rare. Uh, they, they don't make them anymore, they're not gonna make any more of them, so if you get the opportunity to grab one, do it, and I think you'll be happy with it.